The following segment is sponsored by Daniel A. White and Associates. It does not necessarily reflect the views of WDEL or Forever Media. News and issues that affect the first state. Stay tuned for Dell Aware PM Edition, starting at 6. Now, back to the Rick Jensen Show on WDEL. Dan White, financial planner, specializing in retirement income. Calls in every Wednesday, write the news at 1.30, and I am a happy camper client, and I believe you would be as well. You can always give him a call, 888-690-8820, 888-690-8820, and uh, he's not going to charge you for a consultation because he cares more about you being happy in retirement than, uh, I don't know, next to a hamburger. Hey, how you doing, Dan? Doing well, Rick. How about yourself? All righty. So, uh, let's see. Um, getting my taxes about done. And everyone just, you know, either either you're done or you're looking at the calendar going, oh, man, now what? But seriously, um, this is a time to take a look at your IRAs, uh, maybe some more uh, contributions or maybe deductions. And, Dan, I know that you are an expert when it comes to IRA mistakes and how to fix them. So yeah, thank, I'm glad you're on the phone. It's yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, year after year, uh, we see many of the same IRA errors happen again and again and again. So it seems appropriate to create a short list of kind of repeat offenders <laughs> and offer some advice on how to move properly forward. So the first one we typically see is people try to roll over a required minimum distribution. So you can't do that. I mean, RMDs cannot be rolled over. If an RMD is rolled over, it is considered an excess contribution, and the excess contribution rules must be followed. You have until October the 15th of the year after the year of the excess contribution to make the correction, and there's no penalty. So prior to the deadline, the rollover RMD must be withdrawn along with the earnings. No special tax forms are required. There's no penalty. Uh, any earnings are taxable. And after the October 15th deadline, only the excess must be withdrawn. The earnings can remain. That's kind of weird, but uh, they let you keep the earnings in if it's after the deadline. Hmm. The second IRA mistake we, we always see is parents or grandparents try to contribute to a Roth IRA for a child, and the child has no earned income. So, again, your child has to have some form of earned income to be eligible for either a traditional or a Roth IRA contribution. If the contribution is made for to an IRA for anyone with no earned income, it's considered, again, an excess contribution, and the same correction protocols that we just covered must be followed. A third big one that we see all the time is people try to take two IRA distributions in the same 12-month period and roll them both over, and that's a no-no as well. <laughs> they have what's called yeah. the one rollover per year rule does not allow two separate IRA distributions to be rolled over within the 12-month period. So combining them into a single deposit doesn't work. Is there a fix? Yeah, if you're still within the 60 days, one of the distributions can be rolled over. Usually a person would choose to put back the larger of the two withdrawals. Since the other distribution cannot be rolled over and you're stuck with the taxes anyway, yeah. you might as well put it into a Roth, assuming you're still within the 60 days. So this would qualify as a valid Roth conversions, and conversions do not count against the one rollover per year rule. Uh, fourth one, non-spouse beneficiary of the kids try to do a 60-day rollover with inherited IRA money. Uh, unfortunately, this is a big no-no. There's no fix. This is what we refer to as a fatal error. A fatal uh, error. Fatal. Yeah, fatal error. Okay, you can't fix this one. Uh, Non-spouse IRA beneficiaries cannot do 60-day rollovers with inherited IRAs. So if you take a distribution from an inherited IRA from a non-spouse, uh, and you're not, and you're not. Uh, you got to be 10 years younger than the owner as well. Siblings, it might be different, but your taxes are going to be due. And then the last one is, ta if you have taxes withheld on Roth conversions when you're under 59 and a half, this is kind of a sneaky mistake because taxes withheld on Roth conversions do not get converted. And if you're under 59 and a half, this is a problem. The taxes withheld are in fact an early withdrawal and a 10% penalty would be due on the money sent to the IRS. Fortunately, if caught in time, there's still effects. If within 60 days the amount withheld can be replaced 
with money from another account. Use other dollars to make up the withholding and put these make-up dollars into the Roth and the conversion would be made whole. And now the taxes that you originally withheld on the Roth conversion will be a credit at the IRS. So a lot of times you can fix these mistakes if you know what you're doing, but uh, uh, the one that we talked about is the non-spouse, the kids taking the uh, the inherited IRA. If it touches their hands, that's a fatal mistake. It's all going to be taxable. Yeah, you keep it with uh, whoever the conservator is. It could be Fidelity or Schwab or yep. CIA. What? I, I got. I have a question for you here. As I'm uh, listening and taking notes, um, the 60-day rules. It sounds like there's two different things you're talking about when you mention October and such. So uh, if you screw it up, you can fix it within 60 days. Is uh, is that part well, of what you're talking about? No, there's there's two different things. The okay. October the fifteenth, the October the fifteenth is on uh, excess distribution. So if you roll over an RMD or or you put money in an account for a kid and they don't have any earned income, that's considered an excess distribution. You have until October the fifteenth of the following year to get that money out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So that's where the October fifteenth comes in. The spousal rollover, or I mean the rollovers, um, the sixty day rollover. You can only do one of them within a twelve month period. So you can't you can't say, hey, in January I'm going to take money out of Fidelity and move it to Vanguard, and then in July say, hey, I'm going to do it again. Uh, you can do as many transfers, Rick, in a calendar year as you want, as long as it doesn't touch your hands. But if they're sending you the check yeah. and it's made payable to you, you can only do one of them every 365 days. See, um, when I hear the word rollover, I'm thinking, oh, okay, you're fired, uh, you retired, something like that, yeah. and you want to roll your 401k into an IRA. Right. And, it and a me- lot of times when you do that, you have the check made payable to the new custodian. I mean, that doesn't count in the 365-day rollover. Yeah, I, I've I've been through that. And uh, it seems to me like the people who are in the employees of these big companies, they have a pretty good handle on what's going on. And when I say I don't want to touch the money, they've always laughed and said, no, you don't want to touch the money. Um, and I'm wondering, so wouldn't a uh, conservator you know, like Fidelity or – um, Schwab, or anything. I mean, wouldn't they be aware of this, or are people actually like uh, rolling over a required distribution? Like you mentioned at the very beginning, you know, you have an RMD, you're retired, or it's uh, an inheritance, and you're required to take money out of it. That's your required minimum distribution. You're required uh, based upon your age and the age of, let's see, the the uh, the parent who passed away, for example, um, or their birthday. So, I mean. When you, if you decide to try to roll this thing over, isn't it going to get caught by the folks at say Fidelity? I mean, it should, but a lot of times, Rick. I mean, a lot of times the big eight hundred, you know, for lack of a better term, the eight hundred number companies, yeah, um, they're they're order takers. You know, I mean, if you call them up and say, hey, you know, I want to I want to cash out my IRA or whatever and send me a check, um, it's your money. So they're they're just doing what you ask them to do. Um, now, should they tell you, hey, they're, you know, you got to pay tax on it? Yeah, I mean, they can offer you some type of advice, but ultimately, ultimately, I tell people this all the time: who does it fall on? It's going to fall on the taxpayer. So whether you get good advice, bad advice, I mean, if they're just taking an order from you and doing what you tell them, ultimately, the tax consequence is going to fall on the taxpayer. Uh, you can't, you can't count on the custodian. You know, well, the custodian told me this. Well. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. you're the taxpayer. You're supposed to know the rules. So, and and to your point, I mean, I've called, for example, uh, I use Schwab for uh, a couple of yep. accounts, and and I've gotten some really great advice from people there in Texas, and I got some lousy advice from uh, a young guy who uh, had been there for like eight or nine months in St. Louis, and because I asked the guy, oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, he was giving me some really something that seemed questionable to me. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, by the way, where are you? Go St. Louis. Oh, okay, thanks. And so I, I hung up and I dialed again and uh, I called a different department that was in Texas. I got a guy who's been in the business for like 30 years. And I said, hey, there's this guy in St. Louis who said blah, 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 blah. And he goes, what's that guy's name? And I said, why? Well, I, <laughs> I said, why? Well, I, I always, because I always ask names. And by the way, that's always uh, a good advice no matter who you oh, call. Yeah. Always Without ask, a doubt. you know, what's your first name? Because they're not going to give you the last name, but give, get the first name. And uh, and I've I've noticed also, Dan, 
sometimes I'll call uh, some business and uh, I'll be asking for some information. I go, hi, my name's Rick. What's yours? And there's long pause. Hi, I'm just asking your first name. Why do you want my first name? Because I right. take, and I say, because I take notes. And, you know, it's 1.45 in the afternoon on March 13th. And I take copious notes on stuff that's important like this. And I do it. I keep a little notebook. And then after sure. a year or so, everything, or whatever the, con, whenever the transaction's done and it's all clear, it's all fine, then I, I throw away the, the note. But, man, I, I find that you really need to do that because, you, as you were saying, sometimes you get somebody who doesn't know what the hell they're doing over there. Oh, without a doubt. You know, we we talk about that in our seminars all the time, and you're one of the the guys that takes notes, which is good. Uh, but that's the bottom line. When you're dealing with big companies, you don't know if that person on the other end of the line has three days of experience or 35 years of experience. You know, you don't know. So, you know, they're giving you advice, and if it, if it's right, great, but if it's wrong, it's not going to fall on the custodian. It's going to fall on you because you're always the taxpayer. I, I know that's, uh, you know, that's great. I mean, you try, you know, that doesn't fly with the IRS, you know, well, the guy at, at Vanguard or Fidelity told me this, well, tough, they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> oh, and, and by the yeah. way, as, as long as we're talking about this, cause you could be on the phone waiting and trying to get information and, uh, and it doesn't work out. And I don't want to mention any names, uh, Kirsten Spitzenberger, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to mention any names here, but uh, I had some questions and some hassles with a big government agency, and she got on the phone, and, and she called me back in like 45 minutes. She goes, okay, I finally got him on the phone. I actually did that, and I thought that was cool that you guys do that for people. So, oh, yeah. uh, no, no, it's excellent, and I didn't, it's not like I'm paying her. So no, I was on. It's funny you bring that up. I was in a, in a, an appointment last week, and we were trying to do a rollover. We were on hold. I kid you not, an hour, an hour. We still didn't get a person, and I, and the guy had to leave, and he left. And I said, let let me call them in the morning. I called him in the morning, and I was working while I was on hold. But it was another forty minutes. So we were an hour and forty minutes on hold. Uh, before we could get anything done with this one particular company. So well, I love you know it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's not. It's you know, customer service is kind of a thing of the past anymore. Nobody really has it. So, well, not with you guys, though. And so I appreciate that because they wasted your time, not mine. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know how that is. Uh, let's see. Sunday morning is seven o'clock. Yeah, I, I feel like I should be walking away from you now. Yeah, thanks, pal. <laughs> well, I can't reach you, so I can't slap you. Yeah, you know? I know, right? <laughs> Probably do this at your farther than arm's length. It's good. All right, um, but uh, kudos to Kirsten. Uh, I really appreciate that, that she she wasted her time instead of mine. Um, okay, Sunday morning, seven o'clock on the money with Dan White. What's going to be on the program this morning? I mean, sorry, this Sunday morning on uh, WDEL. Well, this Sunday, we ought to be drinking some green beer at 7 o'clock, right? It's St. Patty's Day, right? But uh, <laughs> yeah, the topic Sunday is, will interest rates go higher or lower? You know, that's kind of what the whole market is uh, kind of gyrating up and down on. If they think they're gonna, the Fed's going to cut rates, you know, the market takes off, and they think the Fed's going to raise rates, and the market will go down. So we're going to talk about the impotence either way on whether we think rates are going to go higher or lower. That's great because, uh, and, and folks, I want you to know, Dan has been accurately predictive on this over the years, and right now we're reading news stories suggesting the Fed, well, they, they may not raise them right away. They want to see uh, if inflation comes down. And the Biden administration is saying, oh, no, 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 In inflation is down. We're doing fine. And there's that battle going on. So, yeah, historically, I'd like to hear what you – in fact, I'll be up at 7 o'clock to hear this. Thanks, Dan. There you go. All right, buddy. All right, Rick. Take care. And you can always Google Dan White and Associates. You can give him a call at 888-690-8820. Always great advice, and I've relied on Dan and his team for many, many years. And you can, too.